Hello, and welcome to another video in my series on operations management. In this video, we will be talking more about network diagrams, more specifically, critical path analysis using the forward and backward pass method. Now this topic will have to be tackled in two videos because you have to have certain background information before you can actually apply that in a network diagram. Now to make things easier, if you are watching this video on YouTube, please refer to the description below the video and there you will find a link to the corresponding blog post for this problem. On the blog post you will find two files you can download. The first file is an actual image of our network diagram. The second file is an actual PDF of these PowerPoint slides. While not difficult mathematically, critical path analysis can get confusing because we use a lot of abbreviations. So if downloading the diagram and downloading these PowerPoint slides both in PDF form will help, please do so. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Now if you remember from our previous video on network diagrams, we have the Milwaukee Paper Company that is installing a complex air filtration system. And we listed out all the activities that are required to install that system, their order, their immediate predecessors, because remember, certain activities can only come after previous activities, and we talked in depth about that in our last video. And we also added the factor of time. So each activity has an associated time frame with it. Now certain activities, depending on if they have predecessors or not, can occur at the same time as other activities. And that's what makes network diagrams so useful. It allows us to see how our activities are laid out in time. Now if you remember, we finished with this diagram in our last video. So we laid out our project network using our activity nodes and we added in the time factor at each node as seen in the blue. Now we're actually going to start here when we do our critical path analysis and our forward and backward passes, but we're going to expand upon this diagram by building a little bit more complex one with more information in it. So what is critical path analysis? Well, it allows us to answer a few questions. It allows us to see when we can expect our project to be completed. So if everything goes according to plan, we will have an anticipated completion date. Which activities, if any, can be delayed without delaying the overall project? So there are certain activities in our network that must be completed on schedule. However, there are other ones that have what we call slack time in them. And those are activities that can actually be slightly postponed, or we can move resources from them to other activities to make sure that those other activities get completed on time, and then we can go back to the first activity. So it tells us where in our project we have some slack time in order to make our allocation of resources more efficient. Now to conduct critical path analysis, we need more information than we have up to this point. What we have to do is we have to find two starting times and two ending times for each activity. The first thing we need to know is the earliest start time for an activity. And that is dependent on what activities come before it. So if we have activity A, we start now. Activity A takes two weeks to do. And activity B comes immediately after. Well, activity B can only have an earliest start time of the second week. So if we do that process all throughout our diagram, we will see the earliest possible start time of every activity. We also have to find the earliest finish. So that will depend on what's our earliest start time, how long does our, our activity take in and of itself, and then we sort of add those together and come up with our earliest finish. Now the other two are a little bit more difficult to explain, and that is the latest start and the latest finish. Now we're going to find those by doing our backwards pass through our network. And of course at this point, you have no idea what that is. 
But what it means is that in our project, certain activities have an, a start and finish threshold as to not to delay the entire project. So doing the backward pass will actually help us figure that out. Now to do all this, we're going to have to modify our network diagram, more specifically our nodes. So the first thing we're going to do is divide our nodes into five regions. So we have a long region down the center, and then we split the two regions on either side in half. Then we're going to apply unique coloring to all five regions. And that will allow us to tell what part is what, and oftentimes we can speak in colors instead of abbreviations. Now, if you remember, in a couple slides ago, I talked about earliest start time, earliest finish time, latest start time, and latest finish time. Well, we divided our nodes into regions and then applied colors to those regions to represent all that information. So at the top of our long gray column down the middle of our node, the A in this case is our activity. So this is activity A. The number at the bottom of that column is the activity duration. So in this case, activity A is going to take two weeks. Now the ES, or earliest start, the EF, the earliest finish, the LS, latest start, and LF, latest finish, those are what we're going to find by doing this process. So right now, you have no idea how to find those. So again, I just went ahead and labeled each part of our node with its corresponding text description so you can see exactly what is what. So what exactly is a forward and backward pass? And no, this is not American football. What it allows us to do is we can analyze our project using this method to figure out things that aren't readily apparent. So the forward pass, what we do is we proceed through our project diagram from start to finish. It will tell us our earliest start and our earliest finish times for each activity. And of course, we denote those as ES and EF. Now the backwards pass we do the exact opposite, as you could probably imagine. We start at the end of our project, at the finish, and go backward to the beginning. And this allows us to find out the latest start and latest finish times for each activity. And those are denoted LS and LF. And again, those tell us the threshold of when an activity can end without delaying our entire project. So how do we find out the information in our forward pass? Remember, we're finding out two bits of data. The ES, which is the earliest start, and the EF, which is the earliest finish. Now to find the earliest start, we find the maximum earliest finish of all immediate predecessor activities. Now, of course, if this is the first activity in our diagram, there are no immediate predecessors. So the ES in that case would be zero. Now all we do is we complete that process throughout our network. So just one after the next we methodically figure out our earliest start and it's actually quite simple to do and you'll see that in part two of our series. We're also finding the earliest finish. And the earliest finish is of course the earliest start of that activity plus the time it takes to actually do the activity. So if we can only start activity B at week two and it takes two weeks to complete, then our earliest finish would be four weeks. Now this will make a whole lot more sense when we actually do the diagram in the second video, but just hang with me for now and you'll see how it works in a bit. Now what about the backward pass? And again, remember, we're starting at the end of our project and running it back in time to the beginning. So in this case, we're finding two pieces of information. The latest finish, which is LF, and the latest start, which is LS. 
Now to find the latest finish, we find the minimum LS, or late start, of all activities that immediately follow the node we're on. So we go back in time and then we look forward at a node that immediately follows where we are. Now the latest start is just the latest finish minus the activity time. So again, we're running backward. And I would say the backward pass is the least intuitive of the two because we're actually going backward in time. And again, this will make a lot more sense when we actually do it in the second video in the series. Now what this process will generate in most cases, not all, is what's called slack time. And once we go through the forward pass and the backwards pass, we will have certain activities where the latest start is greater than the earliest start. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means we have some time, some flexible time built into that activity. So we could conceivably delay it by maybe a week or two, depending on what else is going on, and still not affect our overall project. So slack is just where there's a difference between our latest start and our earliest start, or our latest finish and our earliest finish. Now, activities that have zero slack, meaning the late start and early start, and late finish and early finish are the same, those are critical activities that lie on the critical path through our project. And those activities must be done on time and start on time as to not completely mess up the time frame of our project. That's why they're called critical. Now, if an activity has some slack time, it can affect the activities next to it. So it's kind of like slack actually in a rope or in a string. So if you pull one end of a slack rope, well, it pulls the entire rope tight. And this is kind of the same way in our diagram. So if we have two consecutive non-critical activities, meaning they have slack, they actually share that slack. So if B and D each have one week of slack and they're next to each other, if we delay B by a week, D also loses its week of slack because it was dependent on B having that week, see? So it is just like pulling a rope tighter. The whole thing pulls tight. Now, if a non-critical activity, meaning it has slack, has critical activities or no slack on both sides, delaying it will only affect itself. So there are some activities that are kind of islands by themselves that have a critical activity on one side, a critical activity on the other, so the slack in the middle activity only affects itself, and it could be delayed, you know, potentially quite a long time. So again, all this will make more sense when we actually do the diagram in the second video. So this is actually the spreadsheet for our network we're going to do. And I just wanted to point out that some of our activities have slack, some don't. And notice, if the slack is zero, it is on the critical path. And again, when we do the diagram, that will make more sense. All right, so that was part one in our discussion on the backward and forward pass method in analyzing network diagrams and figuring out what activities, if any, lie along our critical path. So again, please make sure you watch part two in this series where we actually do, in real time, the critical path analysis diagram utilizing the forward and backward pass method. And don't forget, visit the blog post where you can download a PDF of the network and a PDF of these very slides. So that's it for now. I look forward to seeing you in part two.